Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeon. And apologies that this is coming out a little bit later than usual. I'm getting really, really bad at this, but really, really busy with work. Um, but I wanted to share my thoughts with you guys on the Leicester defeat. Another really disappointing performance. And that's the key thing for me. It's not necessarily about the result. Um, you know, I didn't expect Arsenal to go up to the King Power Stadium and come away with all three points. In fact, I expected us to get beat, given the, the, the form of the two sides. But it was the negative nature of the performance that really, really frustrated me. So I'm going to keep it short and sweet, but I'm going to go into sort of my post-match thoughts. And I'm going to start with the formation. Now, a lot of people have criticised Dunai Emery for switching to the back three. Me not included, because I was someone who in my preview, I said that I would have gone with a back three because... I understand the reasons that, that Unai has for doing that, number one. And number two, we saw it in Guimaraes just a few nights before. So that made me think that Unai was preparing for that system. And, and that's why I kind of went with that um, in sort of my preview. But it, it wasn't necessarily a problem with the system. It was more the implementation of the system. And that's what a lot of people uh, are failing to realise at this point. You know, most of us believe that David Lewis is probably more effective in a back three for me, he he wasn't uh, the other night. Um, there were some occasions, particularly in the first half, where he stepped out of the defence with the ball. And I thought, this is what I want to see from David Lewis. I want to see him take that step out. I want to see him look up and pick out passes because that is what traditionally David Lewis has been very, very good at doing. But he was stepping out and he was losing possession. And partly because there weren't enough options ahead of him. I thought the midfield pairing of Genduzi and Torreira were really, really poor. Um, I couldn't work out what the role of Aubameyang and Lacazette was. Were they supposed to be almost like wide forwards with Mesut Ozil playing a sort of false nine role? I couldn't work it out. I couldn't understand what it was Unai was trying to achieve. When I saw the lineup, I thought, great, we've got Aubameyang and Lacazette up top with, with Mesut Ozil in behind them. But that wasn't the case. The two uh, forwards were forced to do so much defensive work and it was in a desperate attempt to try and keep Leicester at bay. And... You know, I've seen some people saying that, yeah, you know, we've done OK for, for a period of time. For me, that's not good enough. We're Arsenal Football Club. I want to see us go home or away and cause teams problems. And I know we had a couple of sort of half chances in the first half. But for me, Arsenal didn't do enough and Arsenal didn't show enough. And it's really, really disappointing. Going to go back to the Genduzi point because... You know, he receives a lot of praise and, and most of the time he deserves it. But I also think that Matteo Genduzzi has been slightly overrated of late. And, and I've said this before and I've taken stick for this before. But I think his passing of late has been terrible. His positional sense is all over the shop. And I wrote an article on Granite Xhaka last week, which you can find on my Twitter feed if you're interested, where I highlighted that the reason I believe Granite Xhaka was always being selected ahead of the other midfielders is because of his positional discipline. Yes, he's not an actual defender. Yes, he's rushing the challenge. But if you look at the heat maps and you look at where Granit Xhaka positions himself on the pitch, more often than not, he is where he needs to be. And that's what Matteo Genduzzi and Lucas Torreira are struggling with. They're both pressing right and left. And if you look at their heat maps, you'll see that. You'll see um, that Genduzzi in particular spends a lot of time on the right-hand side. And it's a real, real problem for us. Um, so positional discipline is, is one of Granit Xhaka's strong points. I know they're not many strong points. Um, and I'm not for a minute suggesting that he's a great midfield player. We know he's not. But in terms of the options that we've currently got, he certainly, in my opinion anyway, warrants a team in, uh, warrants a play, sorry, in that starting 11. Um, the next day, we were sort of, uh, and I'm going to say rocked because a lot of fans felt that after the Leicester game, that should have been it for Unai Emery. And people have been feeling that way for a few weeks now. But the reality is, that the club were never going to pull the trigger after a defeat at Leicester. There's been all this talk about them seeing an improvement, a structure, and then being overall pretty pleased with the way we performed up at Leicester. I don't agree with that, but that's the club's stance at the moment. And that was reported by David Ornstein. We then heard lots of people saying, actually, that's nonsense. Where's he got that from? He was wrong about Pepe. Why is he saying this now? Well, actually, the club have come out today and released a statement which backs up what David Ornstein was reporting in, in fairness to him. So it appears that for now, the public narrative anyway, is that the club are going to back Unai Emery. And if you ask me why, 
I'm probably going to say it's because of the fixtures that we've got coming up. We've got Southampton at the Emirates, followed by Norwich away. That's the two teams in 19th and 20th place, respectively. So the feeling is that, you know, Unai Emery can turn it around, given that those are our next two games. And, you know, he could go and win those next two games, and then all of a sudden things change and the outlook changes. And I think they're willing to give him those couple of games to get it right. But if that was to go pear-shaped, if we weren't to take maximum points from those two games, given the fact Leicester and Chelsea now are nine points ahead of us, we're eight points away from Manchester City, who currently occupy fourth, the situation is going to get a little bit desperate. And you don't want to be in a situation like last year where you're reliant on a cup competition as your your only way into the Champions League. And that's my fear. But those are sort of my overriding thoughts on the Leicester game. Apologies, it's not as, as long and as in-depth as normal. Um, but like I said, it's been a crazy week. We'll be back with some more content. Uh, keep up to date with all my written work via my Twitter feed. And uh, check out 90 Minute Football as well. I'll be on there tomorrow uh, chatting with the guys. Not entirely sure when that's going to be released, but we'll be doing a, a look into Arsenal's season so far. So uh, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe button, all the usual things. If you're listening via the audio, please, please do leave us a review. Uh, check out the fans phone in from yesterday. Over 6,000 of you have watched that on YouTube, which is incredible. So uh, thank you to every single one of you who, who's uh, sat down and taken the time to watch or listen to that. And uh, we'll be back very, very soon with more. Until then, take care.